measures have covered in uh, respective systems all right so it's it's going to be a uh, pretty uh, familiar and not daunting at all so it'll be a good break from biochemistry which is pretty daunting uh, just let me know once we are uh, live that uh, once okay so i think now we are live on youtube i'm just gonna check and then we will start <laughs> okay right i think we are live now okay all right so so good evening to everyone uh, watching on zoom and on youtube nice to see you all and uh, we're going to be discussing the most important images so 100 images in 90 minutes is the aim and what uh, we are going to be doing is uh, quickly i've written the history uh, you know everywhere uh, on top of the images and then you tell me the uh, you tell me the diagnosis and you and we discuss what should what could be the potential questions you know most of the radio questions are going to be asked in an integrated fashion nobody is going to give you uh, an image and ask you sign even if that happens there'll be like one question in like two years so we don't focus on signs what we want to do is we want to focus on uh, images how to go about the pattern approach how not to get confused okay Right, no vacutainers and radio. Today only radio, no other subjects. All right. So for those of you who are uh, new and who who know me only as as a ma'am who takes BTR, I've uh, done my radiology from um, AIMS, uh, and I did my MBBS from AIMS, followed by radiology, and then my, I did my uh, senior residency from AIMS as well. So I am trained in radiology, but somehow I don't get to teach it a lot. So uh, so today is a good refreshing day. So thank God it's Friday for that reason as well. <laughs> All right. So then let's. Be begin very quickly without wasting any time uh, i will be looking at the chat of zoom and uh, youtube so any uh, questions pertinent questions don't just keep posting if i don't address it save it for later and then in the end we will address the questions academic questions i mean and answers you keep giving me i'll that will make me very happy okay all right so let's start then uh, what i've done is uh, i've divided into systems and in the end we have a few miscellaneous images so that it's easier for you to follow uh, you know system wise and you have that compartmentalization as far as systemic um, you know pathology is also concerned of uh, of that particular uh, radio aspect okay so that's how i've done so 15 images of msk and since we've just finished ortho revision i think that should be uh, very easy and all of you will give me the answer so the first one uh, i'm giving you two very similar cases of spines which have come as questions you know you get both of these as options in the same question so when it's a young Male who has backache, and you have also a hint in the fact that it's bilateral heel pain, which points towards what? What does this history point towards? This history points towards the fact that there is likely enthesitis. Anywhere there is ligament and tendon insertion, and you have inflammation, that is known as enthesitis. All right. So here, Achilles tendon insertion at the calcaneum, you will have pain that is indicated by bilateral heel pain. So this was a neat question in which you got two questions on angst point in the same paper. One was just just the history and they asked you diagnosis the other question was where they gave you this image the ap view and the lateral view is what i am showing you in the ap view all of you giving me correct answer so that's great you can see that the interspinous ligament is ossified this particular image looks like a dagger right so interspinous ligament ossification and the fact that the complete spine is fused by these vertical syndesmophytes inko bolte hain syndesmophytes so the complete spine is fused giving rise to an appearance like a railway track or a tram track on the sagittal view again you can see lateral view you can see how the complete spine at all the levels is fused maybe thickening flowing it is fused very smoothly symmetrically so this is like a bamboo entire spine has lost its segment it's become one long stick hence the flexion the mobility reduces what is the clinical test that we use to measure the uh, limit Limitation in flexion. What is the clinical test called? That is called as modified Schober's test, where we measure that the flexion is basically it normally should be more than five centimeter. Here it is reduced, right? So we you will be given an image of a measuring tape and somebody is bending and we are measuring the flexion, deformity or limitation, and that is modified Schober's test. All right. So the diagnosis that we didn't uh, really talk about, but all of you told me is angst point. So young male angst point. On the other hand, biggest differential in confusion user 
ओल्ड पर्सन नो हील पेन नो यूवीआईटिस नो एसोसिएटेड हार्ट डिसऑर्डर्स इफ जस्ट बैक पेन वो भी माइल्ड बैक पेन है नो इन्फ्लामेटरी बैक पेन एंड वॉट इज द एक्सरे शोइंग अस नाउ इट्स थिक ऑसिफिकेशन इट्स नॉट सिन डिस्मोफाइट लुक एट दिस थिक फ्लोइंग ऑसिफिकेशन है कहाँ पे है ओनली एंटीरियर राइट सो दिस इज ओनली एंटीरियर दैट यू आर सींग वॉट इज द लिगमेंट कॉल्ड विच इज कनेक्टिंग वर्टेबल बॉडीज एंटीरियरली इट इज नोन एज दी ए एल एल एंटीरियर लॉन्जिटिडनल लिगमेंट पीछे posterior longitudinal ligament that is not involved here so the answer here is ossification of all and that disease is what is known as dish that all of you are correctly saying dish stands for diffuse idiopathic skeletal all useless the only useful word here is hyperostosis which tells me that new bone ban raha hai right and it is flowing like a candle so it's flowing along the all right so differentiating features most important एज सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ पेन यहाँ पे नॉन स्पेसिफिक डल बैक एक यहाँ पे कैसा बैक एक इन्फ्लामेटरी बैक एक इन्फ्लामेटरी मीन्स इट रिड्यूसेज ऑन एक्टिविटी इंक्रीजेज ऑन रेस्ट राइट रोमोटोइड आथराइटिस जैसा सो दैट इज दो टू डिफरेंसेज एक्सरे पे यहाँ पे पूरा पूरा फ्यूजन ऑल थ्री लेवल स्मूथ सिंडेसमोफाइज यहाँ पे ओनली ए एल एल flowing ossification i hope this is clear no doubts in dish versus angst pond similarly agar pll ke along ossification ho we call it opll simple enough opll matlab ossification of posterior longitudinal ligament this is also known as japan's disease which out of this is more important neurologically you think all is more important or opll is more important opll has a worse prognosis because was spinal canal narrowing karega it will cause spinal canal narrowing it is all does nothing much except cause pain all right so this is about the three fused spines and the differentials again something that confuses people a lot first off agar aapko x ray diya hai distal end of radius in the exam it's a tumor being talked about first instinct should be gct first think gct he hai and why is it not other things all right so most likely in most exams it is gct what you confuse it with is the next one here which is aneurysmal bone cyst so only one thing i want you to remember e c g what is ecg there are two epiphyseal tumors which i need to know epiphysis means it reaches up to the joint surface there are only two epiphyseal tumors c for chondroblastoma g for giant cell tumor how do i distinguish on the basis of age c for chondroblastoma c for child okay so now out of 1 and 2 1 and 3 you can see that they are reaching the joint surface so these are two epiphyseal lesions second one ko dekhte hain kya iska epiphysis alag hai yes iska epiphysis alag hai the growth plate is not yet fused so the epiphysis is not involved it's the metaphysis which has the expansive lesion are you understanding now so now one of 1 and 3 is uh, gct right so hame kya dekhna hai एज देखना है वेन द ग्रोथ प्लेट इज फ्यूज दिस हैज टू बी अ जायट सेल ट्यूमर अदर थिंग विच विल हेल्प मी इज दिस सोप बबल मेट्रिक्स सो वॉट डू आई नीड टू सी एपिफिजियल प्लस सोप बबल प्लस थर्टी टू फिफ्टी ईयर का पेशेंट इज जायट सेल ट्यूमर ऑल्सो नोन एज ऑस्टियोक्लास्टोमा बिकॉज ऑस्टियोक्लास आर द जायट सेल्स ऑन दी अदर हैंड एपिफिजियल ट्यूमर्स बट ग्रोथ प्लेट इज नॉट येट फ्यूज सो एपिफाइजिस plus ch ch for child ch for chondroblastoma this is also known as a cordman's tumor all right cordman's triangle kya hota hai it's a malignant periosteal reaction all right so it's a malignant periosteal reaction typically seen in osteosarcoma where the periosteum is lifted this is cordman's tumor no relation between the two except cordman okay then finally when it is metaphyseal and i see a soap bubble matrix i see trabeculations then it becomes an aneurysmal bone cyst so the only point remember it's not the age it is epiphysis and metaphyseal that's going 
gonna help you because ABC can have variable age group, all right? It can be in middle age also, it can be in babies or like young people also, all right? So remember, it's E and M that you gotta distinguish if it is soap bubble. Baki agar E hai, to child hai ya adult hai is what is gonna help you distinguish, all right? I hope this is clear. Simple bone cyst will have no soap bubble. SBC will also be metaphysial, but minus soap bubble. It will be just like a simple cyst. Usually proximal humerus will be given if this is the epiphysis and there could be a pathological fracture. There may not be a pathological fracture. All right. So there will be no trabeculations. Can you see trabeculations here? Those will not be present. Okay. I hope this is clear. Next, pretty simple. In half a minute, we are going to finish this. You will tell me the answer. Older person, acute monoarthritis, typically involving the first metatarsophalangeal joint. These erosions are very large. As a rat ne khaya hai. Rat bite erosions with overhanging margins. Yeah, overhanging margins, rat bite erosions. We are talking about gout. Can you tell me a type of a CT which can tell me uric acid deposition in joints as well as in rest of the soft tissue? What modality can pick up uric acid deposition? It is dual energy CT, right? So it's a new kind of a CT. Dual energy CT can pick up uric acid Acid and in fact, we can also see uric acid calculate. So, kahi pe bhi wo characterize kar sakta hai deposition ko. Let's say I did an aspiration and I look at it under polarizing microscopy. Now, what am I going to see? I'm going to see negatively birefringent needle shaped crystal. So, kaise yaad rakhna hai? N-E-N-E. -E -N -E. That is how monosodium urate appears. Why am I learning this? Is there something known as pseudogout? Yes. Pseudogout is also crystal arthropathy jahan pe calcium pyrophosphate deposit ho raha hai. Wo kaisa hone wala hai? Obviously, this is negative. So, that has to be positive. It is weakly positive. This is needle. That is rhomboid. So, mujhe ye yaad hi nahi rakhne ki zarurat. Even though I'm marking cross, I'm deleting. You are only not going to have to remember. Hum bas ye yaad rakhenge. Any any means uric acid, any any means gout. All right. Pseudo gout tends to involve knee most commonly. It presents with calcification of cartilage, which is associated with meniscal calcification. All right. So you're going to see meniscal calcification here. So this is about gout and pseudo gout. All right. Next, old female with backache again. What are we seeing? I'm showing you three kinds of x-rays. What are we doing here? So in the first one, this is an uncomplicated case of osteoporosis, where I'm just seeing that the bones are bending. The bones are not as white as they should. So bone density is definitely reduced. And because they are very weak, they can't even uh, hold the axial load of the body. So they are becoming deformed. Right? We used to draw fish like this. That is how the bones have become. So this is known as cod fish or cod fish mouth. Some people write vertebrae. So this is what we are seeing for osteoporosis. But is x-ray sensitive? Should I wait to see ki fish dekhenge, if it diagnosis banayenge osteoporosis ka? No. Remember, I will see this very late when the bone has already lost almost 40% of its density. I will have to investigate it early. And in today's time, investigation of choice is a DEXA scan wherein we take a T-score and I compare bone mineral density. T-shirt, kon pehenta hai? Young adults wear T-shirt. So I compare my patient's density with a young adult and I see how, uh, how badly is this bone mineral density doing. Alright, so this is the investigation of choice. In today's time, we also do a quantitative ultrasound and a CT. This is a repeat INI CT question. In a few years, this will become better than DEXA. Alright, but not as of now. Alright, Right, so these are the investigations. Now, how can it get complicated? It can get complicated like this. What has this become from a weak bone? Now, I can't even see the bone. Are you seeing that bone to dick bhi nahi raha, ma'am? Aisa hazy, hazy. Image quality is so bad. Image quality is not bad. Bone quality is bad, right? So what has happened? Bone ka sara calcium chala gaya. Density chala gaya. It has undergone an osteoporotic fracture. This is known as a compression fracture. This is defined as severe osteoporosis. Process. All right, compression fracture. Ho gaya. How can I treat? 
I can treat it by putting some what? What is this white, white thing? This is bone cement. So what is this technique known as? Yeah, we have put in PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate. So we have put in a bone cement here, which is PMMA. And what is this technique known as? This technique is known as vertebroplasty. So we can do a vertebroplasty for osteoporotic compression fractures. Okay. So that is what you want to know. Vertebroplasty, if you balloon dal ke kar rahe, so see what we were earlier doing is just putting bone cement. Then we felt like bone na, cement gets leaked. So what we did was first inflate a balloon, create some space and then put in the cement. So that is known as kyphoplasty. So basically same thing, dono mein cement dalna hai, so anything can be given to you. All right. So I hope this is uh, clear. Caption, you have to <laughs> you have to close your captions, right? I don't have to close. Huh? Very newbie at YouTube, I guess. Okay. When I know answers to technical problems, that is a fault at your level. Ki ma'am ko pata hai, but how many pata? So, 65-year-old backache and lower urinary tract symptoms. Can you tell me what is this? What is, what is the diagnosis here? I don't want you to tell me ivory vertebra because I've given you a very specific scenario. So, ivory vertebra is a very general term. In this case, what is the diagnosis? Is it pages? Why will a Paget's patient have uh, lower urinary tract symptoms? There is That is where your answer goes wrong. Because if I have to give you options, I'll give you A, Paget's, B, C, A, prostate. And I know that for a fact, 90% of you will mark Paget's because that is option A. And you will think that, Are, ye to mujhe aata hai. I'm such a dude. And then you will get it wrong. So this is indeed ivory vertebra. I am not denying it. But that has lots of differentials. One definitely top of my list is Paget's ka blastic phase. But what else it can be is a blastic metastasis. There are two main primaries that give blastic metastasis. One is prostate and one is breast. And interestingly, dono ko pata hai kaise milte hai? Dono ko hi milte hai via Bateson's plexus. You know, that is a repeat question that from intercostal veins and from prostatic veins it goes via the Bateson's epidural plexus and it reaches the bones and that is how both of them also get blastic metastasis. So when I get this backache with low over urinary tract symptoms, suddenly my topmost differential becomes this. Apart from this, other differential could be a Hodgkin's lymphoma. Rarely, very rarely, it could be tuberculosis end stage, which can lead to this, but it's very, very rare, all right, that TB leads to blastic, but re remember for the sake of completion. Okay, osteosarcoma also very rare that it involves the vertebra, all right, both unlikely. So this is about ivory vertebrae, okay? Next question. Very interesting. So five-year-old boy with low socioeconomic status, low bone density, I'm giving you two scenarios. So tell me the diagnosis in first two, then we'll talk about the third one. Pages will not present as UTI. That's why I'm saying pages is not the answer there. The answer is CA prostate metastasis, okay? Right. So first one, all of you getting it correct. Simple. You can't get this wrong in the exam. Metaphysical cupping, splaying, fraying. We all know it. Metaphysis ka widening ho jata hai, irregularity ho jata hai because there is no calcium. So what happens is the zone of provisional calcification in the growth plate widens. And this is the earliest sign, right? So ye sara calcium ke liye cells wait kar rahe and they are going to basically compress on the metaphysis. What about this? When the metaphysis is small, smooth and white this is this is scurvy and this is known as white line of Frankel. Apart from that, in a case of scurvy, you know, baki naam ki signs hai, you don't even need to know. What you want to see is, kya metaphysis smooth and white hai? And second question you will ask yourself is, is the epiphysis very well defined? This is known as a Wimberger ring sign. So, don't even memorize the names. Always look for two things. One you want to see is the metaphysis white and smooth. Second, you want to see epiphysis well defined here. Nahi. Third thing if they are giving would be pain. This is a very painful limb. In fact, the child doesn't want to move, right? So the child doesn't want to move and uh, that's because there is subperiosteal hemorrhage. Because scurvy mein vitamin C nahi hai, that's why collagen is very weak because hydroxylysine and proline doesn't help. And see how you are doing biochemistry and that helps you here. So hydroxylysine and proline basically is defective and that's why you have hemorrhage, you have corkscrew hemorrhage, bleeding gums, subperiosteal hemorrhage, which is very, very painful. All right. So these are the two buzzwords that you want to look at and in both of them the key is low bone density dono mein hi bone density kam hoga 
But if I tell you this, if I show you this X-ray and I tell you it's a normal bone density, same age hair, short stature. Now, can somebody tell me the diagnosis? One of the repeat AIMS questions. Osteogenesis imperfecta? Will, all right. Will OI have normal bone density? Huh? Ye to bohut problem ho gaya. OI may be to collagen nahi hai. Yeah, collagen 1 is only not there. Collagen 1 is the main uh, collagen of bone because we remember it as bone has 1. Yeah, and OI has 1. So collagen 1 ka problem hai. So bone density in OI will be very low and that is why the person has recurrent fractures. So ye to hoi nahi sakta. Achondroplasia you are saying because of short stature. All right. I can accept it to a certain degree, but yeah, what I want to get at here is what are you seeing is a metaphysical irregularity. Can you see this? That all metaphyses, not just the knee, all metaphyses are very irregular. Otherwise, the bones are looking fine. So this is what is a metaphysical dysplasia. This came as one of the options in the INICT exam. All right. So this is metaphysical dysplasia. And why a chondroplasia I can accept is because a chondroplasia is actually a type of metaphysical dysplasia. All right. So it's actually a type and it fits here also because you can see that the femur is almost equal to the tibia fibula indicating rhizomelic shortening. Hmm? Samaj mein aara hai sabko? Champagne glass to dekhi nahi ra na? Hame to legs ka x-ray diya. You can't even see that. Okay. What is this by the way? Ye kya hai white white? What is this? Foreign body. This is a gonadal shield, all right? Bladder will not be so white. Bladder is not uh, having contrast. So this is just a gonadal shield that we use in children so that their uh, testis does not get radiation because that is very sensitive to radiation. So we will do this x-ray at the time pe gonadal shield. Karenge. Okay, one very common doubt that all of you have is how do we uh, distinguish a healing rickets from scurvy? Yeah? So you remember how I was stressing too much on two points? One point was that the metaphyses would be smooth here and second, would be epiphyses would be very well defined. That is how you distinguish. Because in healing rickets, you can have a white metaphysical line. But that line would be how? That line would be irregular. That fraying of rickets will persist. Second would be this epiphyseal thing will not be there. All right. So those two features, the fact that it is irregular and no epiphyseal ring will be there is how you can distinguish a healing rickets from scurvy. All right, I'm not posting any group links today. All right, if you want BTR group link, come tomorrow for biochemistry class. Okay, today only radio, no BTR today, only radio. Fine, so this is about uh, the metaphysical dysplasia. Next, tell me the diagnosis. Last year, neat question. Suddenly, I'm going to see 100 people disappear and only come for the link <laughs> somehow and not for studying. What is this? Hand tumor. Hand dekhte hi hum sochte hai. N. Hand is N, right? So this is N chondroma, multiple tumors of the short tubular bones of the hand. But this is not it. There is a syndrome. So syndrome kya hai yahan pe? I can see hemangiomas have been given to me. So this is Mafuchi syndrome. So Mafuchi syndrome is N chondroma plus hemangiomas. In case this was not there, just enchondroma the and hemangiomas nahi the, oh, only enchondroma, all years disease. Theek hai? So this is clear. This is mafuchi. This is enchondroma. Is saal ka question, hyperpigmented macules, precocious puberty, you are seeing a metaphysical lesion with crooked sort of a neck. This is shepherd crook deformity because of a pathological fracture. On a side note, can somebody tell me the scoring of pathological fracture? Jo uska prophylactic fixation ka need batata hai? We had discussed this in orthopedics of bonus. Mirel score, very good. More than eight means prophylactically fuse karna hai, correct? All right. So this is shepherd crook deformity, which is seen in fibrous dysplasia. But the fact that they are giving you this, macules bhi hai, precocious puberty bhi hai, this will be available as recorded for everyone on the app and on YouTube, okay? Kya hai ye? Syndrome ka naam batao koi? This is McCune-Albright syndrome, right? So, polyostotic FD, if it involves multiple bones. Can I diagnose polyostotic FD in this image itself? I can actually. Look at the iliac blade. Don't you think it's abnormal? Kitna expanded hai, hai na? So, here only I can see ki do bones to involve hoi gai, femur and iliac. And in fact, if you see the pubic remi also is all expanded, okay? So, polyostotic FD, multiple FD, McCune-Albright, these hyperpigmented macules, 
macules are cafe au lait macules which have an irregular boundary which is likened to the coast of mane this on the other hand where else do we typically see cafe au lait macules in nf1 that is very smooth likened to a coast of california all right so this is just us things that we got to know for some reason okay so this is mckeown albright syndrome if i tell you this is a person with chronic pus discharge from a limb and you tell me what the arrow is marking what is the white arrow marking sequestrum involucrum or cloaca dhyan se dekho arrow kahan hai is arrow in the white portion or is arrow on the black portion arrow is not on the white portion <laughs> arrow is on the black portion isn't it so white i have encircled for you so the white white ko hum radiology mein bolte hai surface sclerotic surface sclerotic surface sequestrum this is the dead bone right so sclerotic sequestrum is dead bone why is it white or sclerotic because dead hai demineralization ho jayega then if it is gray if it is lucent it is the in volucrum it is in volucrum i miss somebody's message which was a nice message i will uh, read it in, in the end so lucent was in volucrum and where it uh, splits where the pus is discharging that is known as cloaca so actually the white arrow is pointing to in volucrum okay so this is what you want to know hmm? theek hai okay so this was about msk to kafi hat tak ortho bhi revise ho gaya तो ये है कुछ नहीं समझ आए तो सिक्वेस्टम ये बात भी सही आई कैन अग्री टू इट कि एग्जाम में अगर इतना क्लियर नहीं दिख रहा यूजुअली इट्स सिक्वेस्टम विच इज आस्ट ओके तो आप मार सकते हो भगवान का नाम लेके सिक्वेस्टम और राइट सो नाउ वी गो टू सीवीएस रेडियोलॉजी टेन इमेजेस डायग्नोसिस सेम है बट पार्ट अलग अलग है वॉट इज दिस what is the first x ray showing the first x ray usually you know how a chest x ray if you have seen it usually aorta ka knuckle hota and then aorta goes seedha seedha like this but here i see that now the aorta is whole it's roaming around and it's unwold and then it's going so this is aortic aneurysm but it's a thoracic aortic aneurysm right descending thoracic aorta ka aneurysm hai and what i am seeing here is an abdominal aortic aneurysm on a ct sagittal image i can see that normally itna hona tha here it has focally widened so this is abdominal aortic aneurysm which is the most common site of aortic aneurysm and on a doppler hame kya dikhega doppler mein hame dikhega that red and blue both are being seen this is known as yin and yang sign so do you know on doppler we see red and blue they indicate direction of flow hai na so normally aisa hota hai if this is the vessel and this is the probe if blood is coming towards the probe we see red if blood is going away from the probe we see blue here what happens in an aneurysm let's say this is an aneurysm this are probe yahan pe blood is moving round and round like this so what happens some blood is coming towards the probe so i will see red color some blood is going away from the probe so i will see blue so this is the only place where you will see red and blue in the same vessel yeah how cool isn't it normally to khali red ya khali blue dikhega here i see both and this is what marks an aneurysm for me on the very first initial image so any time they give you pulsatile swelling very very important the buzzword pulsatile swelling what will you do next koi ct koi mr koi dsa nahi first is ultrasound plus doppler jisko aap duplex ultrasound bol sakte ho so doppler or duplex whatever is there in your option any time they give you both always prefer duplex because it has both right so this is what you are going to be doing investigation of choice is a ct angio but what i do first is ultrasound doppler okay so this is what you want to know so this is about this acute dyspnea after long haul flight very easy we are seeing a ct scan contrast in hand ct look at the pulmonary artery this is the pulmonary artery here dividing into right and left and what are we seeing ki white white contrast ke beech mein there is hypodense embolus so this is pulmonary embolism all right uh, ascending will push mediastinum towards right no ascending itself will be causing this on the right in fact here there is a component of right as well if you see the right mediastinum is also pushing so probably the entire ascending arch and descending is all aneurysmally enlarged here right so that's why you are seeing that bulge theek hai 
usually jo thoracic aneurysms hai if there is history of trauma there will be associated dissection as well but dissection will in, in itself will not cause this widening okay so aneurysm in this case is more likely but usually i'll tell you jo thoracic aneurysms hote hain both are there dissection plus aneurysm so you can't see dissection on x ray you will have to do a ct for dissection which i'll show you in 1 minute okay 1 minute mein i'll show you dissection on x ray you can't make a diagnosis ki dissect hua hai isn't it okay so that is what you want to know so this is pretty clear pulmonary embolism this is a history that tells you that patient is likely immobilized for a long time and that is why dvt tha and that has embolized investigation of choice is going to be a ct pulmonary angiography okay i hope this is clear so now tell me this independent question a tall male has come to you with acute chest pain i am showing you a ct angiography and look at the aortic arch ye banana shaped aortic arch hai look at this now it has divided yeah so this is aortic dissection history why tall male has been given ha huh? height kyu de di male ki what do you want to rule out in this tall male yes you want to rule out marfan syndrome isn't it so marfan has very high likelihood of aortic dissection so ye apne ko rule out karne ki zarurat hai and that's why investigation of choice is a ct angio you have to give contrast to diagnose aortic dissection so this is about that all right so this is aortic dissection management will depend on what part of aorta is involved what do we want to do in this case स्टैंडफर्ड कौन सा क्लासिफिकेशन है दिस पेशेंट यू कैन सी द आर्ज गेटिंग इन वर्ल्ड सो एनी थिंग प्रोक्सिमल टू द लेफ्ट सब क्लेव एन आर्ट्री इज स्टैंडफर्ड ए ए फॉर असेंडिंग एंड आर्ज ऑल राइट सो ए इज ऑलवेज सर्जिकल इमरजेंसी यू हैव टू ऑपरेट इफ इट इज डिस्टल टू लेफ्ट सब क्लेव एन इफ इट इज जस्ट डिसेंडिंग देन यू कैन डू मेडिकल मैनेजमेंट बीटा ब्लॉकर आई वी एस मोलॉल इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट एटिक डिसेक्शन congenital heart diseases congenital heart disease what are for just names i want to uh, tell you because you get one out of these you know currently they are loving to ask this ek na ek aai jata hai so this is figure of 8 or a snowman appearance so figure of 8 snowman answer bata do fatafat tell me type also so this is totally anomalous pulmonary venous circulation type one most common type supra cardiac means the pulmonary veins are saying no i don't want to go in left atrium like every other pulmonary vein in the planet i want to do something different so pulmonary veins all combine join brachiocephalic join svc and svc se milke they are all going into ra so this is the supra cardiac type where svc jod ke they are going into ra second type is cardiac where directly they are going into ra via coronary sinus and last sabse khatarnak is your infra cardiac where they are joining with ivc pura ulta ja ke ivc ko they are joining and this type 3 has the worst prognosis because this gets blocked hai na to zyada stud banne jate life mein to fir bura hi hota hai hai na so here what is happening here they are getting blocked and that is why it has worst prognosis presence at birth only okay so this is figure of 8 tapvc yahan pe kya hua yahan pe i can see that there is a egg on string appearance a globular heart hai on a very narrow mediastinum egg on string seen in transposition of great arteries now a lot of students tell me ma'am second third to kafi similar hai here also it's looking very round round like an egg and very superior mediastinum is very narrow so kaise bataye ki kaun sa box shaped heart hai epstein's anomaly hai and kaun sa egg on string hai so for that you need to know the name uh, for that you need to know what happens in both of them so So that main change you want to see is whether there is plethora or there is oligemia. Oligemia means pulmonary blood flow, pulmonary arterial flow is reduced. So hearts, heart fields, I mean sorry, lung fields appear blacker. Blood flow come हो गया, markings come हो गए, so the lung fields are gonna appear blacker. That is oligemia. On the other hand, in plethora, look at this. You are seeing a lot of markings. So the lung markings here increase. Why? Why do I need to memorize this? You don't need to memorize this. Epstein's me kya ho raha hai? Epstein's me R A becomes very big and R V becomes very small. Atrialization of right ventricle happens. So pulmonary arterial flow reduces. That's why oligemia. That's why black lung fields. In T J, what is happening? Ulta ho gaya. आर वी में से एटा निकल रहा है एल वी में से पल्वनरी आर्टरी इज अराइजिंग सो लॉट्स ऑफ ब्लड गोज टू पल्वनरी आर्टरी हेंस 
split ho raha okay so if you just know the pathophysiology you can recognize so here the key is not looking at the heart now here what will help you what will help you is looking at the lung fields okay right so this is what you want to know last one is the easiest of them all everybody knows this this is boot shaped heart seen in tetralogy of fallot can you answer a few questions why is it boot shaped which out of the four components is going to make this heart boot shaped it's the right ventricle right so rvh ke karan se it is going to be uh, boot shaped second question do you see oligemia or plethora here lung fields are definitely appearing black oligemia but why oligemia do you know one of the component is infundibular pulmonary stenosis because of pulmonary stenosis low blood flow and there's going to be oligemia apart from that one question do these patient ever develop heart failure no they don't develop heart failure because they have a ventricular septal defect to uh, come decompress right any time the pressure becomes too much it can decompress so these these are all the points that have been asked from top which is the most common cyanotic heart disease so this is sorted last of cvs i think no second last of cvs dysphagia hmm? gi complaint in cvs how come so there is i i did a barium swallow because patient said dysphagia in barium swallow i see a posterior indentation on the esophagus no stricture per se just an indentation posterior indentation means a likely vascular structure is coming and compressing on the posterior aspect of esophagus so what we are seeing look at the transverse ct cct here this is the esophagus this here is the trachea and you can see that a vessel normally no vessel goes behind the esophagus here what you have is an abnormal vessel going behind esophagus this is aberrant right subclavian artery normally kaise hota hai normally an arch of aorta you have brachiocephalic you have common carotid of the left side and you have left subclavian to so brachiocephalic combine i mean divides into right subclavian and right common carotid isn't it here in our sa what happens is you have four branches right common carotid left common carotid left subclavian and right subclavian arises as the fourth branch and it goes behind the esophagus because it has to cross over and go to the right right subclavian right so it has to cross and grow over to the right subclavian so that is what you are seeing it arises as the fourth branch and courses behind the esophagus so this condition is known as dysphagia lusoria okay so this is dysphagia lusoria ha theek hai बीच बीच में वो टाइमर वाला क्वेश्चंस व्हाट टाइमर वाला क्वेश्चंस सो दिस इज व्हाट यू नीड टू नो ओके सो ये डिस्फेजिया अगर बोथ इंडेंटेशन है वन ऑफ यू इज आस्किंग बोथ इंडेंटेशन देन दैट मींस देयर इज अ डबल आर्च ऑल राइट सो यूजुअली व्हाट हैपेंस देयर इज अ रिंग है ना सो दोनों तरफ इफ देयर इज अ डबल आर्च व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट देन यू विल सी बोथ साइड पे इंडेंटेशन ओके सो दैट दैट्स आल्सो समथिंग यू कैन रिमेंबर एंटीरियर पोस्टीरियर वी हैव स्पाइन टू आवर रेस्क्यू राइट सो यू कैन सी वर्टिब्रल बॉडी इज वर्टिब्रा इज पोस्टीरियर सो दैट्स हाउ आई नो इट्स पोस्टीरियर अनदर हिंट यू कैन सी ट्रेकिया ट्रेकिया इज एंटीरियर टू इसोफेगस दैट्स हाउ आई नो okay so this is dysphagia lusoria identify the device is it a pacemaker is it um, um, implantable defibrillator anything else that you think this is a pacemaker because lots of questions have come on pacemaker so i have to see this white white leads if they are very very small which they usually are it's pacemaker next what i want you to know uh, is where are the leads placed so fmg ka sawal hai which chamber are they present in so when you see two the shorter one going upwards this one here is in the right atrium and this one here going to the base of the heart is right ventricle all right so here just look at number of leads if there is just one lead it is in rv likely if there are two leads it has to be in ra and rv if there are three leads it has to be in ra plus rv plus lv right so this is how you will know which chamber they are placed in yeah simple enough so this is about where the leads are and what the device is okay right so this is done two systems done many to <laughs> so next 10 images women's imaging very important because gyne you get a lot of questions uh, you know integrated questions very quickly this is very high yield and very easy also okay trachea kaise dikh gaya trachea dikhne ke liye thoda 3 saal ka md lagega 
तो कोई बात नहीं बट स्पाइन दिख गई ना सो यू कैन सी वर्टिब्रा हियर सो दिस इज बेसिकली वर्टिब्रल बॉडीज एंड ये जो ब्लैक ब्लैक है दैट इज ट्रिक ओके सो दैट इज हाउ यू कैन नो ऑल राइट गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट वन so here what we have is amenorrhea right so amenorrhea diya hai hyperemesis diya hai what you can see are these multiple cysts that you are seeing so that is h mole hydatidiform mole partial mole complete mole partial mole will have some fetal parts also so there are no fetal parts which are seen here there are only grapes and cysts which you are seeing all right so this is known as a snowstorm appearance right so snowstorm appearance this is a complete molar pregnancy hyper msis kyu diya is it helping thank you so much yeah it it is helping us right because uh here you have a lot of beta hcg which gets produced so bahut sara beta hcg ke karan there is hyperemesis sometimes you know they can also have thyrotoxicosis can somebody tell me why hmm? how can we correlate endocrine also with radio we can because beta hcg ka jo sub unit hota hai ye beta wala that's common isn't it so that can mimic tsh and that can cause thyrotoxicosis apart from that it can also have pih and pih interestingly which presents before 20 weeks so normally the definition of pih is the fact that it should occur after 20 weeks here it occurs early again it's because of too much beta hcg okay so that is what we have here okay so this is complete h mole if there is hist okay so two cases of enlarged ovaries dono mein hi enlarged ovaries hai if i tell you history of ivf treatment with very large large follicles in the ovaries very easy very commonly asked ohss ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome hai na bahut sara uh, beta hcg we probably injected can can it be anything else something we have just see if in a case of molar pregnancy i see the same picture what do we call it we call it theca lutein cyst right so this image basically could be two things agar ye history hai ivf treatment history it has to be ohss as no doubt but if it is a molar pregnancy again very high beta hcg theca lutein so same pathophysiology but irregular menstrual cycle no ivf history and now follicles are not large follicles are pretty small arranged in the periphery and what is more striking for me rather than the follicles is the stroma here the stromal volume is increased the stromal echogenicity look at how wide it is that is the most specific marker of this condition that you have all diagnosed correctly which is pcos you know so earlier you know we you we used to study uh, the number of follicles ki itne hone chahiye pehle koi bolta tha more than 10 hone chahiye more than 12 hone chahiye then it uh, got updated to more than 20 but now you know what they say don't even count no need to count the number of follicles if you see multiple unhone bas generalize kar diya khali multiple peripheral no need to count just multiple peripheral follicles and what is crucial is this point here if the stromal volume echogenicity is increased you are likely dealing with a case of pcos all right so this is what you need to no so yeah so rotterdam criteria is correct we follow rotterdam for pcod wherein two out of three need to be positive one out of it is what we have studied the ultrasound features which is the investigation of choice second would be biochemical marker where you see an isolated uh, raise in lh right testosterone would be raised and history jo hame diya gaya hai so in this case if i see this plus this can i make a diagnosis you can actually without even knowing the biochemical markers because two out of three are positive okay yeah now 20 which are told this yeah so i'm saying that more than 20 hai but now what we follow is we don't even count this is what we actually are more interested in in practice you know so this is more useful for practical aspect exam mein agar aata you know the number now okay so this is about pcod right no type of twins dikha rahi hu what you got to look at is the margin so if the margin is thick and it is dividing like a lambda what is this this is dichorionic diamniotic twins this is known as twin peak i think everybody kind of knows this and when you see that it is thin very thin and inserting like a t what is this this is the t sign monochorionic diamniotic right why is it thick here because chorion bhi hai amnion bhi hai both of them are there that's why it's thicker whereas here it's only chorion in the membrane that's why it's thinner okay right 
गायनी की बात कर रहे हैं लेट्रोजोल फॉर पीसीओएस यस सो इफ यू आर डीलिंग विद अ केस ऑफ इनफर्टिलिटी हियर द करंट गाइडलाइन से दैट लेट्रोजोल इज बेटर देन क्लोमिफिन सिट्रेट नाउ ओके सो दैट्स अ रिपीट क्वेश्चन एज वेल थैंक यू सो मच सैड सो दैट इज डीसीडीए एंड दैट इज एमसीडीए टाइप्स ऑफ ट्वेंस ओके मोनोकोरियोनिक मोनोएमनियोटिक कैसे दिखेंगे विल देर बी एनी मेंबर इन नो राइट दोनों बेबीज एक ही एमनियोटिक फ्लूड में फ्लोट कर रहे होंगे देर विल बी नो मेम्ब्रेन हियर सो दैट इज मोनो एमनियोटिक मोनोकोरियोनिक वॉट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्टर फॉर प्रोग्नोसिस इज इट एमनियोनिसिटी और कोरियोनिसिटी वॉट इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्टर मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट फैक्टर इज एक्चुअली द कोरियोनिसिटी राइट सो बोथ एम सी डी एंड मैम सी आर गन बी इक्वली प्रीडिस्पोज टू कॉम्प्लिकेशन सच एज ऑल योर टीज वाले नाम है ना सो ट्विन टू ट्विन ट्रांसफ्यूजन सिंड्रोम टैप्स ट्विन अनिमिया पॉलिसाइथीमिया सीक्वेंस ऑल ऑफ दीज आर गन बी मोर प्रीडिस्पोज इन मोनोकोरियोनिक twins all right so i hope this is clear to all of you next is very easy peasy and i've given you complicated sort of history which will make you question everything but then when you look at the image it all becomes very easy so lenox gustod ka drug of choice kya hai i just wanted to fit in that question of pediatrics as well drug of choice is valproid all of your complex syndromes the drug of choice still remains valproid so basically the female must be on valproid and she conceived and look at what the baby got the baby had no cranium and that is why we can see that the brain is floating the eyes look very prominent because of that so this has been given the name of frog eye but this is an encephaly all right what could probably have prevented an encephaly in this female is if it if she took a very high dose of folic acid right so agar usne 5 mg folic acid liya hota probably it might not have occurred all right or she would have been on the lowest dose of valproate if she came to you Uh, in the first trimester on valproate with seizures which are well controlled will you tell her that you have a risk of encephaly and you should change your treatment to say lamotrigin or levetiracetam should she change her treatment no we don't change the treatment but if somebody develops fresh seizures you start them on the safe drugs which are lamotrigin and levetiracetam but we don't change if the uh, if the uh, seizures are well controlled we just keep her on the lowest possible dose and you give her a folic acid supplementation right so that's a important clinical scenario that gets asked okay thank you so much for your kind words so this is encephaly next early pregnancy sequence what is the first change that you see in a pregnant female the first change that you see that you are seeing in this case is a gestational sac pani ka sac hai so it will be black and echoic so you can see this gestational sac here which is the very first change can be seen on the tvst earliest around 4.5 to 5 weeks hai na to itna jaldi we can pick up a pregnancy usually a female does a upt at the first missed period which is around 4 weeks so in around 1 weeks time we can see the gest gestational sac on the ultrasound we call her one week later we see the surest sign that this indeed was a g sac it was not a pseudo sac which is the yolk sac developing inside the g sac so this comes in around one week later so 5.5 to 6 weeks so what we do is when we see the g sac we tell female you come after 7 days and we will confirm so this is what we see if we further call after one week female says that no no mujhe to dil ki dhadkan dekhne hai right so today's patients are so aware they will tell you where is baby's heart Beat, why are you not showing? So we'll tell them. Who they can never one week. Bad or out, and right? so then we call her one week later. We will see this fetal pole has developed. So fetal pole will develop one week later, and in around two to three days, the fetal heart rate can be seen here in this fetal pole because CVS is the first organ system to develop. So six point five to seven weeks we call her, and we can show her fetal heart rate. Should I do a Doppler? never do doppler in first trimester all right we usually avoid doing doppler in the first trimester so for fetal heart rate we use the m mode ultrasound m for motion heart is moving so m mode ultrasound right so that is what is fetal pool and finally if female says that no maine mcq karte time pe double bleb sign pada tha i want to see double bleb you tell her okay come back one more week later so double bleb sign is when you see amnion all right so it's not harmful it's just that it uh, it gives a higher energy and we want to avoid it so unnecessary nahi karna right so 7.5 to 
एट वीक्स है ना सो सेवन पॉइंट फाइव टू एट वीक्स डबल ब्लेब में क्या मिलेगा यू विल सी एमनियन एंड यू विल सी योग सैक राइट सो एमनियोटिक सैक योग सैक बोथ ऑफ देम यू कैन सी दिस टू ब्लेब्स हियर तो ये क्वेश्चन आया है वॉट आर द टू ब्लेब्स इन डबल ब्लेब साइन वन इज एमनियोटिक सैक वन इज Yoksak. Okay, how to know which is amnion, which is chorion? So anything could be anything. You know, it's not a rule that just me embryo have. वो ही yoksak है. But likely that this is yoksak. Uh, this is yoksak and this is amniotic sac. But I'm not marking it because it could be anything, right? So it you can't just say on the basis of image. And why do you want to say? It doesn't make a difference, no. So this is about the. Early pregnancy ultrasound. I think last of uh, women's imaging. If I give you history, that dysmenorrhea is symmetrical uterine enlargement. है. तो ये क्या है? Diagnosis क्या बताओगे? Symmetrical being the buzzword. Ultrasound पे you can see that the transitional zone between inner endometrium and myometrium is thickened. MRI पे you can see the salt and pepper where there are these white white spots here. So this is adenomyosis. Adenomyosis means the presence of endometrial glands and stroma in the junctional zone in the myometrium, right? So this gives you the salt and pepper sign. These white white spots that you are seeing here at the junctional zone all right on the other hand abnormal uterine bleeding hai with this asymmetrical enlargement a mass very heterogeneous mass on the mri this is indeed a fibroid or a leiomyoma right so the buzzwords here would be asymmetrical versus symmetrical enlargement okay right so that takes care of women's imaging so we are not even half way through i think but we will finish in in the next half an hour or so if we maintain the speed are you guys good to go ha samajh mein aa raha hai sab kuch okay moving ahead to gu genito urinary 10 images okay Did your fibroid in the last image can be polyp? No, it can't. Look at this. This is in the myometrium. A polyp is always in the endometrium. So a polyp would be an intra-endometrial lesion. This is in the intramural myometrium. Man, this can never be a polyp. Okay, so ये तो fibroid ही है. What it? Usually polyp diagnosis they will not give you MRI. They'll give you ultrasound Doppler and they'll show you one vessel, feeding vessel sign. Okay. Cardiac activity can be detected latest by twenty one days. No. लेटेस्ट नो नो सेवन वीक्स वुड बी सेवन फोर आर ट्वेंटी एट नो सो वीक्स के हिसाब से करो ट्वेंटी वन डेज दे अराउंड अराउंड ट्वेंटी एट डेज या ट्वेंटी फाइव डेज के आसपास ओके सो दैट इज व्हाट यू वांट टू नो जी यू रेडियोलॉजी वेरी क्विकली समबडी विथ रेकरेंट यू टी आई कम टू यू आई एम गिविंग यू आई बी एंड आई एम गिविंग यू सी ऑल्सो दिस सी वॉज आस्ट इन द लास्ट एफ एग्जाम एंड नीट ऑल्सो आई थिंक सो हियर वॉट यू कैन सी इज Both on the IVP, you can see how the lower poles are looking like shaking hands. Hey, right kidney. Hey, left kidney. How are you doing? They're trying to shake their hands. So, what is happening? Normally, kidneys are minding their own business. They don't want to meet each other. But here, on the bottom, they are trying to shake hands. So, this is a lower pole fused. So, this is horseshoe kidney. And on the CT, when I take a section here, you can see how the kidneys are fused at the lower pole. So, correct. This is indeed horseshoe kidney. This is known as shaking hand. Calluses, right? So they can give you this image. Actually, usually CT ka image only they are fascinated with. And why this person has recurrent UTI? Any significance? There is a significance. The significance is the fact that the ureters now course over the isthmus, and that's why there is stasis. Yaha pe urinary stasis ho jata hai, and that is why they have recurrent UTI. In fact, they have recurrent calculi because of the constant irritation. They can also develop. transitional cell carcinoma do remember there is no increased risk of rcc rcc risk is not increased it is transitional cell which is increased in a horseshoe kidney any other importance with trauma yes even in trauma this is higher predisposed because of this isthmus in the midline okay so trauma may be zyada injure hota hai this is ivp this is cct okay i hope that is clear so this is horseshoe kidney Bilateral flank pain. Forty-five-year-old male says, "My father also had some issue. Now I'm also having, starting to have flank pain. When we do an IVP and we do a CCT, this is what we are seeing that both of the kidneys are very enlarged. IVP पे तो समझ ही नहीं आया. Why are calluses looking so irregular? Cyst. We can't make out on X-ray, right? So I am seeing just the calluses which are very much splayed. But when we did the CT, we realized, oh." 
kidneys are full of cysts so that's why bichara pelvic allicial system has to go around in between and that's why it's looking so splayed like a spider leg so this is known as a spider leg sign there's also a swiss cheese nephrogram which is associated but ct and ultrasound is crucial here it is going to show you multiple large cysts in the kidney is it just the kidney which is involved in this patient no it's also involving the liver right can you see how the liver is also involved is the spleen also involved is the spleen also involved in this case you can see some cysts here but this is just the left lobe of liver this is the spleen right so spleen is not involved it's just the liver which is involved okay so here you can see multiple cysts in the liver you can see it in pancreas you can see it uh, you can uh, you can have associated uh, diverticulosis in the colon you can have berry aneurysm right so those are all associations of diagnosis autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease all right so this is about adpckd a neonate a newborn comes liver involved in arpckd as well you tell me usme cyst nahi honge arpckd mein main problem is fibrosis right so arpckd does have liver but liver fibrosis is the problem here liver is very uh, fine overall except for the cyst okay right what is this guys this is correct posterior urethral wall when you have urinary dribbling and you have poor stream and what are we seeing antenatal ultrasound has also been given of this neonate of bladder dilatation and you have posterior urethra dilatation which is a keyhole sign which happens because of these valves valves hote and the level of posterior urethra jiske karan se you have upstream obstruction bladder and pu are dilated and rest of the urethra is narrow right so you see this filling defect here i'm just going to erase so that you can see you see this filling defect here which are the valves the membranes which don't allow urine to flow and that's why he has poor stream urinary dribbling in fact this is the most common cause of congenital urinary obstruction okay so what this can actually lead to in 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 infants or basically antenatally if the urine is not passing they can have severe oligohydramnios leading to pulmonary hypoplasia which is known as the porter sequence right so pov can actually also be a cause of porter sequence and investigation of choice after baby is born is mcu maturating cystourethrography you can't do an mcu in uh, and in utero cases okay just for clarification so this is about that easy just a spot up for you urinary incontinence following spine trauma spine ka trauma tha uske baad se incontinence hai we did a cystogram meaning i put contrast into the urinary bladder it is elongated with multiple diverticulae what is the diagnosis very good christmas tree ki yaad aa gayi nahi so this is christmas tree bladder neurogenic bladder spinal control has been lost that's why you have these trabeculations bladder is very much thickened okay so this is not rupture this is neurogenic bladder okay trauma pe aate hai history of straddle injury chalte chalte man fell in uh, the the hole and had urethral uh, bleed had bleed, blood at meatus and we did an rgu so this is investigation of choice of urethral trauma this is retrograde urethrography so now tell me rg is showing you what how are these two uh, images different you're saying membranous urethra is a problem no in fact even if you have to take a guess without seeing the image if it is straddle injury it means what that likely anterior urethra is ruptured if it is perf for pelvic it is perf for posterior urethra right so agar pelvic fracture hai then posterior right so membranous to main waise hi na bolu if i say anterior it includes what penile and bulbar so my likely bet is in between the two now let me look at the rgu first rgu dekhte hain how do we know the parts the horizontal part within the penile shaft is the penile urethra where it takes a bend bulb of urethra this is the widest part bulbar or spongy urethra can you see how there is extravasation from this place and look at this horizontal part is penile again where it was supposed to take a bend now there is rupture so in both case i can be sure that it's bulbar or spongy urethra but is there a difference in the two cases can you tell me what is the difference in the two cases yahan pe can i say that 
it is still limited there is some rupture but it is not like this where it's going like all over the place so here this is a partial urethral rupture whereas this one is a complete urethral rupture any uh, difference history wise both will have blood admeatus because trauma has happened this guy can still void urine ye ye nahi bolega have inability to void wo thoda thoda fir bhi void kar raha hai but some of it is probably getting leaked out here so this is partial urethral rupture but this one here is complete urethral rupture but you know the importance if i have blood admeatus i should never put in foley's because if i put a foley's in this guy when i put my foley's i will con uh, convert this partial urethral rupture also into a complete one so we don't want to put foley's and that is why contraindication is foley's so any time they give you blood admeatus and they give you uh, inability to void next step kya karna hai next step is rgu if rgu shows you partial or complete urethral rupture what do you want to do next next you want to put an spc after the rupture is diagnosed okay so that is what we are going to do supra pubic cystostomy next spc next okay i hope this is clear more trauma for you now bladders are getting ruptured urethra ke baad the bladder phut raha hai so you have to obviously tell me what is extra peritoneal what is intra peritoneal image 1 क्या है डायग्नोसिस दिस वाज वन ऑफ द नीट इमेजेस ऑफ लास्ट ईयर व्हेन एवर द बज वर्ड हियर इज perivesical bladder ke aas pass hai it has to be extra peritoneal right so you can see it's around the bladder it's not going anywhere else extra peritoneal look at this prevesicular space not going anywhere else prevesical space ka naam hai space of regius so this is also extra peritoneal bladder rupture but when i see it's going either udar near bowel loop this can't be extra peritoneal this has to be intra peritoneal bladder rupture and ipbr will always happen if the dome of the bladder is ruptured upar kab phatega any time it's rupturing anywhere else, it will come around the bladder but to go up into the peritoneum dome has to rupture and it has to be full hai na isliye bolte hai ki full bladder ke sath kabhi road trip pe nahi jana chahiye so those of you you know i saw a few comments you are attending this class even after selection just because you wanted to study radiology to क्या सीख के गए रेडियोलॉजी तो सीखनी नहीं थी वॉट यू वॉन्टेड टू लर्न इज दैट अब रोड ट्रिप पे जब जाएंगे तो पानी ब्लैडर वॉइड करके जाना है डोंट ड्रिंक अल्कोहल डोंट ड्रिंक टू मच वॉटर और राइट एम टी योर ब्लैडर इन देन गो फाइन सो दैट इज वॉट यू हैव लर्न अदर्स हैव लर्न वॉट हमें तो कहीं ट्रिप मिल नहीं रही हम तो पढ़ रहे हैं हमें बस इतना याद रखना है इफ कॉन्ट्रास्ट इज अराउंड ब्लैडर इट इज एक्स्ट्रा पेरिटोनियल इफ कॉन्ट्रास्ट इज गोइंग इन योर बावल लूप्स इट इज इंट्रा पेरिटोनियल ओके ना विच वन इज गन बी मोर कॉमन obviously the less severe is more common so epbr is more common and is less severe the management is only conservative put in a foley's or kuch khas nahi karna ipbr is surgical management because urine is going in peritoneal cavity it will cause peritonitis okay so yahan pe surgery karna padega fine so this is about bladder rupture चलो बताओ फटाफट काला मास ब्लैक मास इन किडनी डोंट गेट दिस रॉन्ग एनीवेयर यू सी काला काला मास जस्ट मैच इट ये क्या है बिलो द स्किन वॉट डू ऑल ऑफ अस है किसी के पास बहुत ज्यादा होता है किसी के पास थोड़ा सा होता है इट इज फैट राइट तो अगर काला काला लाइक फैट इफ द कलर ऑफ द मास इज लाइक फैट दिस इज लिपिड there is only one lipid containing mass in the kidney which is angiomyolipoma so lipolipid ke sath do cheeze free angio and myo blood vessel and muscle right so this is angiomyolipoma you have to rule out tuberous sclerosis and when i tell you ki refractory seizures in the kidney patient why is ma'am doing this because it is tsc case right so is the person likely has subependymal nodules or a sega which is causing seizures and it fits in with this mass okay so this is about this okay so this is done history of frequent urination i am showing an abdominal x ray diagnosis batao diagnosis is your favorite putty kidney the one phrase you were all looking out for but couldn't find was what 
लुकिंग आउट फॉर स्टराइल पायूरिया इट्स अ रिफ्लेक्स नाउ की स्टराइल पायूरिया देखते ही हम पुट्टी किडनी मारते हैं राइट सो नाउ वट यू वॉन्ट नो इज इफ यू सी अ किडनी विच इज कैल्सिफाइड कंप्लीटली कैल्सिफाइड किडनी इट इज अ पुट्टी किडनी और राइट सो दैट इज वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू रिमेंबर सो दैट्स इट अबाउट जी यू प्रेडी स्कोरिंग प्रेडी इजी नेक्स्ट इज जी आई इसमें बहुत क्वेश्चंस आते हैं विद सर्जरी सो एंटायर जीआई सर्जरी यू नो यू ऑलमोस्ट ऑलवेज गेट क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम इमेजेस एंड रेडियो व्हाई नॉट नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस कैन समबडी टेल मी व्हाई नॉट नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस इज नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस यूनिलैटरल और बायलैटरल इट इज बायलैटरल सेकंड विल इट इन्वॉल्व कंप्लीट किडनी कैल्सिफिकेशन नो इधर इट वुड बी कॉर्टिकल नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस और इट वुड बी मेड्यूलरी नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस इफ इट इज कॉर्टिकल नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस कैल्सिफिकेशन वुड बी स्पॉटी 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 अराउंड द कॉर्टिक्स इफ इट इज मेड्यूलरी नेफ्रो कैल्सिनोसिस कैल्सिफिकेशन वुड बी अराउंड द मेड्यूला ओके सो दैट इज वॉट इट इज ओके BTR link, oh my God, I will not share it today. I will share it tomorrow. अब आज की क्लास तो देख ली कल भी क्लास लगानी पड़ेगी देन आई विल शेयर द लिंक ओके सो दिस इज पुट्टी किडनी एंड दिस इज नेफ्रोकैल्सिनोसिस नेक्स्ट इज जी आई रेडियोलॉजी ओके आई डोट नो आई डोट नो अबाउट बी टी आर बट दिस बी टी आर ग्रुप हैज क्रिएटेड सो मच फॉर्मो दैट आई थिंक फ्यू ऑफ यू जस्ट वॉट इट टू गेट इन टू द ग्रुप वेर यू सस्पेक्ट समथिंग सम पेपर आर गेटिंग लीक लेट मी जस्ट गिव ब्रेक द न्यूज टू यू नथिंग इज देयर ऑन द ग्रुप ओके पीपल आर डूइंग द सेम थिंग विच इज कंप्लेनिंग अबाउट वेन बुक विल कम सो नथिंग न्यू यू आर मिसिंग आउट ऑन ओके लेट मी जस्ट ब्रेक द न्यूज अच्छा ही अगर ज्वाइन ना करो ग्रुप तो ओके एंड इफ यू you want to still join you will wait for tomorrow okay chalo ab aao gi radio mein so now we are going into gi radiology so history of dysphagia and weight loss hmm batao jaldi jaldi which is achalasia which is ca esophagus so when it is very smooth the same image had come in names okay so what is this smooth tapering bird beak sign to bird beak sign na bhi yaad rahe what you want to remember is when it is smooth it is achalasia but when there is irregularity irregularity what is this this is cancer so this is carcinoma esophagus dono mein hi weight loss kyu hoga because person can't eat right so here weight loss does not mean ca straight away all right so that's one thing you want to remember achalasia cardia it's a motility disorder investigation of choices more say motility more say manometry the problem is the lower esophageal sphincter does not relax why does it not relax because uske paas inhibitory neurotransmitter nahi hai inhibitory neurotransmitter are no and vip so no 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 is no nitric oxide is not there isn't it so that's why you are having failure of relaxation that is a manometric i mean uh, motility disorder so diagnosis is manometry no this is not barium meal this is barium swallow esophagus is barium swallow stomach is barium meal okay carcinoma irregular irregular hoga this is a rat tail sign okay so this is rat tail sign investigation of choice for ca esophagus you see it on an endoscope and you do a biopsy so this is the investigation of choice okay next infant i aapke paas persistent crying following rotavirus vaccine ha irp more than 15 to maine bhi padhaya irp more than 15 is what you will find on uh, chicago classification okay so manometry chicago classification maine to aur do cheez bhi padhai thi aur do cheeze kya padhai thi maine maine aur do cheez padhai thi that dci if it is more than 8000 what is the diagnosis batao chalo ab डीसीआई अगर ज्यादा है वेरी हाई एम्पलीट्यूड यस नट क्रैकर और हाइपर कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल इसोफेगस एंड इफ यू हैव डिस्टल लेटेंसी व्हिच इज रिड्यूस्ड then what is the answer then it is diffuse esophageal spasm okay why was i not telling this because i didn't want you to remember question khali isi pe aaya hai that manometry chicago all right so you can just remember this will be good okay chalo fata 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 next batao rota virus vaccine infant cry kar raha hai rota virus the movement you hear and you see these images diagnosis is pretty clear it is intersusception one part of bowel going into the other right so most commonly after rotavirus vaccine the payers patches hypertrophy which are there in the ileum so the most common type becomes ileocolic okay so that is ileocolic type so yahan pe kya lag raha hai 
by the way if youtube people are wondering what i am answering it is the zoom people and zoom people i am answering youtube so i am able to manage both so that is a new skill which i have also developed so here you can see one bubble loop going into the other so this is known as a target sign kisi ko lagta donut so donut sign right on a sagittal image you can see how it looks like a kidney so this has been given a name of a pseudo kidney sign so basically it's just one part of the bubble into the other okay <laughs> ठीक है, so this is what is interception and what is the investigation of choice? That is barium enema. So that is barium enema which is showing you this claw sign. Okay, so ऐसा claw बन जाता है wherever the interception is happening. Okay, thank you so much. अभी वापस वापस आओ interception. So why is barium enema the best? Because this barium no, it's gonna push. It is gonna cause this hydrostatic pressure, and we'll have this reduction. It will come out. Whatever segment has gone in, it's also gonna come out. So it's diagnostic as well as therapeutic. That's why barium enema is the investigation of choice. Okay, I hope this is clear. A question you can't get wrong. If you have pain abdomen with guarding and they give you chest X-ray diagnosis तो वही हो गया ना if you give if they give you chest X-ray in pain abdomen you directly look below right diaphragm not left right diaphragm right air under the diaphragm means there is free air there is pneumo peritoneum so this is pneumo peritoneum or perforation peritonitis क्या करना है next what do you want to do next here first resuscitate the patient if given in the options next would be urgent surgery exploratory laparotomy but if they ask you ki batao ki most sensitive investigation kya hai to pick up air what is the most sensitive not what you will do next the most sensitive is a ct scan right so you can see a ce ct here the air will be picked up even if it's very less kyunki it will come anteriorly and we can pick up the black air here all right so you can see this black air so this is the most sensitive one but once this question came x ray diya if i pick it up on x ray only and they ask you multiple options correct what will you do next a iv fluids b exploratory c c ct and d barium what will be the answer a iv fluids b exploratory c c ct and d uh, d would be barium which out of these will you do a and b b and c a b and c a b c d kya maroge isme se correct agar x ray mein dikh gaya do i need to waste time and do ct no my diagnosis is clear it is perforation don't spend time doing ct fatafat explore karna hai answer would be a and b yeah samajh mein aaya so this is how they had asked you this question so same thing they keep asking again again and they change like one thing and answer changes okay so you got to have your concepts clear in this case this was an image which was asked in fmg they asked you that a neonate is there this is known as the football sign this is a scene when you have massive pneumo peritoneum in a supine image we can see how the air is encircling the entire abdomen so this is known as a football sign seen in the supine radiograph in case of very severe pneumo peritoneum okay so this is what you want to know vomiting plus colic ki pain abdomen so history is telling me that there is obstruction wo mujhe janna hi nahi now you will tell me which is small bowel obstruction which is large bowel obstruction and which is the site of obstruction so in this case is it small or large that's all i want to know it is small bowel obstruction if i ask you what part of the small bowel is dilated jejunum ileum duodenum So you are seeing that there are multiple air fluid levels, and in the dilated segment, can you make out, guys, that there are these complete mucosal folds? So you are correct. It is indeed the jejunum which is dilated. Image number B is it small bowel obstruction, large bowel obstruction? Regular sign. अभी बताते हैं उसके बाद. Large bowel because ma'am has already shown small bowel. So ये large bowel ही होना चाहिए. अगर उसमें आपको वाल्यूले कॉनिवेंटिस दिख गए इसमें ना दिखे इज नॉट जस्टिफाइड बिकॉज हियर यू आर सीइंग इन फैक्ट मच बेटर फोल्ड्स इज इंट इट यू सीइंग मच बेटर कंप्लीट म्यूकोजल फोल्ड्स व्हिच आर स्ट्रेचिंग थ्रू द लूमन सो दिस इज आल्सो स्मॉल बबल ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन व्हिच इज आल्सो जेजुनम डाइलेटेशन सो इन बोथ केसेस इफ दे आस्क यू वेदर इट इज प्रोक्सिमल एसबीओ और डिस्टल एसबीओ 
इट्स गोना बी प्रोक्सिमल एस बी ओ देखो लोगों को हॉस्ट्रेशन भी दिख गए तो रेडियो इज लाइक दैट वॉट द माइंड नोज द आई सी यू नो इट्स लाइक दैट सो अगर पता ही नहीं है तो कुछ दिखेगा ही नहीं अगर गलत पता है तो गलत भी दिख सकता है जैसे लोगों को हॉस्ट्रेशन दिख गए किसी को लग गया पेरीफेरल डायलिटेशन है अभी कोई बताता मैम कैंसर भी तो दिख रहा है सो so, देखने को सब कुछ दिख सकता है इट्स हाउ यू थिंक राइट सो दैट इज समथिंग दैट नेवर बी बायस्ड यू नो एनी टाइम यू हैव एन इमेज नेवर बी बायस्ड लाइक दैट सो वेरी वेरी कामली यू हैव टू सी दैट ओके कंप्लीट म्यूकोजल फोल्स इन रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ वॉट इज हैपन इन द पास This is actually very important in the exam, hai na? Exam mein kya hota hai? One question on angst point has already come, so second can't be angst point. Now let me change my answer. And in fact, this time you had two questions which were repeated. No, वो क्या था? Auditory, auditory pathway got repeated. So you would be like, no, no. There must be some other answer in the second one. Let me change auditory pathway only. So you don't be biased. Every MCQ has to be take has to be taken in its own merit. Okay, this is very important. And every image has to be taken in its own merit. Like suppose you have these two patients who are coming. Will you be like, nahi nahi. Abhi pichle mein hi to SBO diagnose kiya hai. You are you have ostracism. You must have large bubble. You can't do that, right? Two patients can have small bubble, and because it's more common it's more likely so this is very important ki mcq ko na patient ki tarah dekho then you will not be biased ki are kali to diagnosis banaya ye ab nahi ho sakta no it can be all right so this is very very important all right so these are complete mucosal folds that's the learning point here ki agar aise complete mucosal folds mile this is a feature of jejunum and these folds are known as valvulae conventus okay i hope this is clear okay hurry up pratik is saying to hurry up so now we will not talk okay we will be very fast what is this fir mujhe mat bolna ma'am go slow now you will tell pratik what are we seeing we are seeing just air right so when the air is rising batao iska answer chalo quickly tell me what is this sbo lbo kya dikh raha hai isme <laughs> kya dikh raha hai batao so no hostations are seen now no uh, loops are only seen so when you just see air which is entrapped ye kya hai this is known as a step ladder pattern okay so this is step ladder pattern which is small bubble obstruction all right so this is small bubble obstruction again so what we have learned is all s's are so say small bubble step ladder what step ladder was this and this is also sorry known as string of Folds, all right. So when you see this was the step ladder pattern. When you see this step ladder, which is arrangement of air fluid level, and when you see this string of folds, air bubbles arranged in this ascending order, string of folds appearance. This is small bubble obstruction. Okay, string of folds. Sorry, not step ladder. Step ladder is also there, but this is showing step ladder. This is string of folds. Basically, it's the same thing. You know, समझा दूँ थोड़ा सा. So here, what will happen is. why you have air fluid levels because there is so much air right so that's why you are having air fluid levels forming here same step ladder wanted to form same air fluid level wanted to form but bubble didn't have enough air only obstruction was there but air was not there so what will happen bichara air is only going to arrange as these bubbles like this okay so that is when you see this string of pearls appearance theek hai samajh mein aa gaya नेक्स्ट अक्यूट पेन अपडोमन एंड वॉमिटिंग अगेन ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन का हिस्ट्री है सो नाउ द एज ओल्ड कंफ्यूजन विच इज सिग्मॉइड वॉल्यूलर्स विच इज सिकल वॉल्यूलर्स सो टूडे आई एम गोना uh demystify everything for you and gonna tell you only look at one thing aur kuch dekhna hi nahi hai only look at whether hostrations are present or hostrations are not present right left kuch bhi dekha you will go wrong 100% because if you see this ye to sigmoid volvulus hona chahiye hame coffee bean bhi dikh jayega are kya badhiya coffee bean ban raha hai you will see clockwise anti clockwise everything and you will go horribly wrong here so the only thing you want to look at is hostrations if you see hostrate by the way ab dikh raha hai hostrations yeah so these are incomplete they will not go throughout the lumen look at this they are not going throughout the lumen yahi pe dikh raha hai bas right so these are the incomplete hostrations so if it is a hostral loop hostrate are present it has to be cecal volvulus and yahan pe dikh raha hai koi hostrations koi nahi dikh raha hai so a hostral if there are no hostrations a hostral loop it is sigmoid volvulus okay there is the only thing that you have to look at 
क्या देखेंगे कॉन्स्ट्रेशन है तो सिकल है कॉन्स्ट्रेशन नहीं है नॉट देर सिगमेंट वॉल्यूलर्स ओके Because even the tubes, if you look at two tubes, देखने को तो यहाँ पे भी there are two tubes. You will go wrong again. If you look at right and left, again you will go wrong. All right. So we don't want to look at because those are not reliable. It could be anything because if the loop dilates enough, it can go in any direction that it wants. Okay. So that's something which is very very important. Fine. So you will only look at hostations from now on. Next question: Acute pain, abdomen, diarrhea, tennis mask. So I'm showing you two images, and one is the complication of the original disease. So here, all of you are uh, saying correctly. This is a lead pipe colon. There are no hostations, and you can see this mucosal granularity, ulcerative colitis. This person now comes to me with an acute setting, and what I see is a dilated colonic loop. The diameter should be more than six centimeters for large bowel obstruction. So this is a complication, toxic mega colon. Is it a surgical emergency? Yes, it is a surgical emergency because. it is already inflamed and when inflamed loop becomes dilated it has very high likelihood of rupturing right so this is a surgical emergency very quickly next one painless lower gi bleed you can see this diverticulate coming out this sign was asked in fmg exam last year so this is a sawtooth sign this indicates that there are multiple false diverticulate this is sigmoid diverticulosis and when this person has acute pain acute fever now this is a complication this is diverticulitis investigation of choices what has been shown to you which is a cect so you can see how there is an inflamed diverticulitis as a hazy hazy ho gaya uske around this is diverticulitis all right it's a complication so for diverticulosis uncomplicated investigation of choice could be a colonoscopy or it could be barium enema but both of these you know interestingly become contraindications of diverticulitis because if somebody has inflammation and i do colonoscopy it can perforate if i have diverticulitis and i put barium again if it perforates you will have peritonitis so we don't want to do both of them so jiska investigation of choice hai now it becomes contraindication theek hai samajh mein aa gaya and what do you have as the classification this is the hinchy classification of diverticulitis okay right next one very cute hepatobiliary few liver images so four images fever and right upper quadrant pain two diagnosis one is liver abscess one is hydatid tell me which is what ye kya hai you all know this this is water lily sign on ultrasound which is showing you the endocyst the endomembrane is floating this is hydatid cyst next is a cct that i'm showing you hydatid hai liver abscess hai again you can see multiple daughter cyst this can only happen in hydatid hydatid hi bacche deti hai so that is the endocyst which has daughter granddaughter this is also hydatid of a ct scan what is this calcification again it's only hydatid which gets calcified neither amoebic abscess nor pyogenic abscess is calcified this is also hydatid cyst in its inactive stage ye patient aapke paas aata hai pura google se pad likh ke and tells you doctor please mera pair kar do mujhe pair karana hai i've read everything about it mujhe sare questions aate hain will you do no you will be like no just because you have read kuch nahi hoga all right so you have to basically do nothing here it's inactive and usko ghar bech sakte ho right so here you don't have to do anything any time something is calcified means body has taken care of it you need not do anything okay finally when you see something like this there is a double wall and you have fever this is an abscess right so now is it likely to be an amoebic abscess or it could be a pyogenic abscess no Uh, no way to tell for sure which is which, but when it is a single pocket, it is more likely to be amoebic. When it is multifocal abscesses, it is more likely to be pyogenic. But usually, what they'll give you in the exam is history of dysentery. They will give you. So, if history of dysentery they give you, amoebic liver abscess. History of cholangitis they give you, pyogenic abscess. Okay, I hope this is clear for you. All right, so this bar came up. So I N I C T had a question on abscess, I think. Okay, so this is about abscesses. 
गोल ब्लैडर के अंदर देर आर सर्टन स्ट्रक्चर विच हैव पोस्टीरियर शेडोइंग सो दीज आर गोल स्टोन इंटरमिटेंट पेन है देर इज नो वॉल थिकनिंग नो फीवर दिस इज जस्ट अनकॉम्प्लिकेटेड कोलिथियासिस इंसिडेंटली डायग्नोज इंस्टेड ऑफ हैविंग बिग शेडोज आई एम जस्ट हैविंग दीज छोटा छोटा कॉमेट टेल विच इज फॉर्मिंग सो दिस इज कॉमेट टेल साइन विच इज सीन इन एडिनो Myomatosis, all right. So this is adenomyomatosis, conservative management. Okay. Multifocal abscess and hydatid. Good question. So multifocal abscess will not have uh, abscess within that abscess. You know, you will have multifocal abscesses like this. Uske under nahi aayenge. Okay, got that. So multifocal meaning multiple abscesses. Okay. So this is gallstones and comet tail sign. Obstructive jaundice. Identify the image first of all. This is MRCP, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, beaded appearance, hai, intrahepatic duct. Ka. This is primary sclerosing cholangitis. It's a cholangiopathy which is associated with IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, and it has very high chance of developing cholangiocarcinoma. On the other hand, is barka again. I think this I N I C T only who had this image. Multiple signal voids, black black. These are your C B D stones. Investigation of choice for CBD stones is MRCP. Investigation of choice for gall stones is ultrasound. So, investigation of choice for renal stones is CT. And a thin stone, thin different answer. Gall stone, ultrasound. Renal stone, NCCT. Saliva D stone again calcified hai NCCT. CBD stone. MRCP. ठीक है, nobody has doubt in that. And finally, if I want gold standard diagnostic plus therapeutic for CBD stone, multiple filling defect, endoscopy दिख रहा है. This is ERCP. Okay, Suman is asking posterior acoustic shadowing versus wall echo sign. All right, let me clear that. So ये gall bladder है. If you see a very large stone in a contracted gall bladder, so you have a chronic cholecystitis along with a gall stone so what will happen is chronic cholecystitis has a very contracted gall bladder and there is a stone which is living there okay if stone was not there completely collapsed gall bladder would have been there so here what you are going to see is there will be shadow so what i only see is wall i see echo means white white stone and i see shadow so wall echo shadow sign shadow sign means that there is no lumen यहाँ पे तो काला काला लूमन इज सीन राइट सो दिस इज वॉल देन देर इज लूमन देन देर इज एक्व एंड देन देर शेडो सो दिस इज नॉट वेस्ट साइन दिस इज नॉर्मल गोल स्टोन वॉल इको शेडो मीन्स की लूमन है ही नहीं कॉन्ट्रैक्टेड गोल ब्लैडर सो दैट इंडिकेट्स क्रॉनिक कोलिसिस्टाइटिस इन एडिशन टू गोल स्टोन ओके इफ यू डन पी वाई क्यूज ऑफ सर्जरी और रेडियो दे गिव यू दिस वन क्वेश्चन The gall bladder is scleroatrophic. So scleroatrophic gall bladder is a fancy way of saying there is chronic cholecystitis. है ना समझ में आया? So ये है आपका ये हम्म ठीक है तो ये हो गया. So hepatobiliary done. Last no second last is neuro radio. After this we have what? After this we have respi, which is the last. I am using good notes right now. Usually I use notability, but is not working for certain reason so i'm using good notes which is also pretty good as its name suggests okay so first image all all things white in the brain all things white means there is acute hemorrhage so acute hemorrhage hai sab mein shape dekh ke batana hai which is what and history dekh ke batana hai which is what so when they tell you fall of alcoholic or they tell you trivial trauma tha boxer tha and you see this Eccentric sort of a hematoma crossing the sutures. This is S D H. If you see history of R T A and you see this biconvex not crossing the sutures, this is E D H. ये क्या है? E D H S D H contusion D I. E D H S D H S H contusion diffuse axonal injury. बताओ जरा क्या है ये? This one, I am saying this one on the right. S H. So this is a very round, round lesion. No, this is a very round lesion with surrounding edema. So this is intracranial. This is a contusion. Does it make sense that contusion is here and EDH is here? Is there any way to explain it? Yes, the way to explain it is Coop. 
इनकाउंटर कूप इंजरी है ना अगर किसी को यहाँ पे किसी ने सर से मारा और एक्सीडेंट हुआ यू विल है इम्पैक्ट हियर यू विल कंफ्यूजन एट दी डायग्नली ऑपोजिट साइड यू विल इडियट सो दैट्स व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस केस सो दिस इज कूप काउंटर कूप सो यूजली यू नो कंफ्यूजन विल बी सीन हियर हियर ओके वट इज दिस हिस्ट्री ऑफ आर टी स्टार ऑफ डेथ नाव यू आर करेक्ट वेन यू वर ऑल सीन sh so this indeed is a sub arachnoid hemorrhage so can i say something about all of these the fact that these are all hyper dense these are all white means that they are all acute hematomas right because chronic hemorrhages will not be white they will not be hyper dense one more acute hemorrhage but now it's where is it outside in the meninges or is it inside it's very much inside and it's causing complete dense hemiplegia without any cortical feature so this is a bg bleed bg bleed matlab basal ganglia bleed and if i have to be more specific this is in the putamen putamen is the most common site and if i have to probe further in this man i will find that he has history of hypertension as well so most common site of hypertensive bleed is putamen okay what is this black arc in edh image this one this is frontal sinus okay so frontal sinus in an axillary section will look like this black arc okay theek hai ha okay this is all 100 image i'm taking you know that's why it's a bit longer but like we are almost covering entire radio in 2 hours okay you guys are this generation of btr has become so time pressed like you want to finish everything in 1 hour and like one subject in 2 hours is also not enough ma'am finish in 15 minutes radio if you can finish biochem in 2 hours you have to finish radio in 20 minutes but then when it is 20 minutes you are like ma'am hame samajh hi nahi aaya so then you know you have to invest some time to understand and then the second round becomes quicker you know so don't be in a hurry to finish everything thoda aaram se zindagi jiyo yaar ha so this is uh, <laughs> इतने टाइम बाद आई एम टीचिंग रेडियो एंड दैट ऑल्सो यू वॉन्ट की अभी तो वन एंड हाफ आवर्स ही हुआ है आई विल जस्ट टेक लाइक फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स मोर एंड विल फिनिश एंड वी वुड हैव डन एवरी थिंग ओके सो डोंट वरी एट ऑल एंड थोड़ा आराम से ओके फाइन सो हिस्ट्री ऑफ रोड ट्रैफिक एक्सीडेंट एंड जी सी एस इज लो सो वेरी टिपिकल हिस्ट्री दे टेल यू हियर दैट एन सी सी टी इज इधर नॉर्मल और लो particular hemorrhages okay so low particular hemorrhages or small particular hemorrhages is what you are see and that's what we are seeing also very small small but then gcs was so low so you thought that are there must be some very severe injuries in the brain why gcs is so low so then what you do is the investigation of choice which is an mri and that is what you see you see these multiple black black spots which is diffuse axonal injury you know just the other day i had seen this case there was a very little girl around 8 years who was going on her bicycle okay real life story bata rahi hu just for one minute i will tell you story so that you remember better okay so she was going by her cycle and and she she basically fell from her cycle and then a car basically ran over her so very severe sort of injury but then she went back home wo wapas ghar gayi and she slept she told her mother that i fell and then she slept also so she was awake after that she basically never woke up and she had a completely deranged sensorium so then she was brought to the trauma center and then we did her ct ct came out to be normal you know because mother also said that wo to theek thaak aayi thi ghar se she said she had a fall and then she slept and ct also came out to be normal but then her gcs kept on dipping her gcs kept on falling from 15 to 14 and it was 13 by the time uh, you know she came the, came to the trauma center so we got her mri done and this is exactly the kind of picture that we got there were so so many spots here okay so that is diffuse axonal injury okay so car wo ladki nahi bataya ki car ran over her you know so she only must have uh, told so this is what actually happens that the ct comes out to be normal and there is not much you can do agar gcs bahut low hai you can do a decompressive surgery for her to decompress the brain because eventually this can develop edema okay so you can do a decompressive craniectomy for her in real life but actually agar mcq question aata hai you will do conservative management not much can be done okay 
so it it does uh, become okay with time you know the neurological outcome improves with time if you do a decompressive so actually in this case the patient did end up uh, getting a decompressive craniectomy done okay so this is about diffuse axonal injury okay right so this yeah technically this is what is known as the lucid interval that period of awakening which is typically seen with edh so yes story ek aur cheez kya sikhati hai that we read something in books which is like edh may he lucid interval milega but that is never true in life in life never say never in medicine you know everything can be seen in everything and you know you will have exceptions as well so this is what you need to remember that life mein aisa nahi hota ki bhai humne to padha hai ki edh may lucid interval radiology is wrong everything is wrong it is edh only you maine wo mcq solve kara tha most common ka so you know most common is most common but then it is not always the rule okay so that is what we also learn fine theek hai to ye thoda anatomy kar lete hain what aneurysm so this is an aneurysm i hope you know that so this is an aneurysm that you are seeing when it any time you see this out pouching this is a dsa digital subtraction and geography you're seeing an aneurysm i want you to tell me which vessel is affected तो थोड़ा थोड़ा अनैट करके बताओ क्या कोई बता रहा है हाँ दिस इज ए सी ए राइट सो दिस इज इंटरनल कैरेटेड विच इज डिवाइडिंग इन टू एंटीरियर ए सी ए एंड लेटरल एम सी ए सो दिस इज एन एन्यूरिज्म इन एंटीरियर सेरिब्रल आर्ट्री okay a common a lateral view we can't say okay so this is ac a uh, one of is asking how to differentiate di and ncc the history will tell you history of trauma mein aap ncc nahi bologe but this picture if you ask me ma'am can this be uh, uh, can this be ncc yes calcification and hemorrhage so what sequence is this i never said so this is susceptibility weighted imaging so swi this susceptibility mein black spots could be calcification or basically hemosiderite right or iron which is causing this susceptibility so it could be calcified ncc for sure but when you have history of trauma it has to be diffuse axonal injury okay so how can we distinguish this we can just do a non contrast ct non contrast ct mein agar white hai to calcium hai agar it is i mean more white it's calcium otherwise acute hemorrhages will also be hyperdense but not as white as bone or calcium you know so ct can be distinct can distinguish between the two okay so coming back so this is aca which is going along the corpus callosum jo jo corpus callosum ke along jata hai this is aca quickly radiological anatomy mr angio so tell me uh, uh, ye sabse niche se shuru karte hai blue arrow what is this vessel here posterior circulation aa raha hai this is the vertebral artery vertebral artery is combining to form yellow arrow yellow arrow is basal artery basal artery is going 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 it supplies the pons pontine artery gives rise to two branches so terminal branch in violet violet mein kya hai terminal branch in violet is pca what is the branch before that in light blue light blue mein jo branch usse pehle hai that is superior cerebellar right so superior cerebellar and pca any nerve which courses between the two the nerve which courses between the two is the third cranial nerve so it can be compressed in any of these aneurysms okay so posterior circulation is complete anterior pe jate hain so what is this main vessel marked by the red arrow sabse khatarnak it is internal carotid ica is dividing into one branch here which is going anteriorly so this is aca one branch which does not form part in circle of willis in green is mca right so this is acmc and then you have one more branch connecting pca to the mca that is your pcom so pcom is also a branch of ica so ica gives rise to three branches of circle of willis or two branches aca and pcom okay so this is about the circulation i hope this is clear diagnosis batao options are a aca territory stroke b mca territory stroke c pca territory stroke and fourth is hemorrhagic stroke kaun sa purple reh gaya pca purple is pca no ye rub kar deti hu to it will be clear purple was pca terminal branch of basilar okay हाँ चलो वापस जाते हैं क्या आंसर बना यस एम सी ए राइट सो इसकी में क्या बिकॉज देर इज नो हीमरेज कॉम्पोनेंट इट इज इडीमा एंड इट इज एम सी ए टेरिटरी स्ट्रोक हिस्ट्री इज ऑल्सो हेल्पिंग मी एंड 
CT is also helping me. ACA would be anterior, this widest is MC and posterior would be PCA territory, right? And history is also helping me how aphasia means it has to be MCA territory. Upper limb weakness, facial weakness has to be MCA. Okay, agar kuch na kuch vision ka hai, to PCA hoga. Agar lower limb ka urinary incontinence ki baat hai, to ACA stroke hoga. Okay, three very, very important confusing things that you guys confuse a lot. What is this? If I tell you history of fever with seizures, you have to give me two possibilities here. In real life, if I have to report this MRI, first of all, it's not a CT, it's an MRI. You can see bones are black. Contrast enhanced MRI hai, multiple ring enhancing lesion. Agar main ye MRI report kar rahi hu, I'll give possibility this could be TB, this could be NCC because it's infective. It is not hemorrhagic suman because it is black right there is no hype hemorrhage which is there okay all right so huh, tb versus ncc so how do we distinguish which is more likely so i will give you one information here mr spectroscopy showed me a lipid lactate peak there were ring enhancing lesions and lipid lactate peak was observed now what is the likely diagnosis more likely to be tb if i don't give you that information and i highlight this one lesion now, does it ring any bells? When I see one is conglomerating with the other, this is more likely to be tuberculoma. This conglomeration is a feature of TB, right? So, here more likely is TB. But if you argue, Ki ma ye NCC hai, can I disprove you? No. This can very well be NCC in life. But in MCQ, if they tell you lipid lactate peak, it has to be TB. And this is a repeat question. You know, the... <laughs> One more story you want to know. So the very first time I started teaching uh, around two years back, the very first AIMS exam, which happened around one month after I started teaching, this question had come in AIMS. Okay. So students were like MR spectroscopy. We don't know, ma'am. Please take class on MR spectroscopy. So that was the very first class which I have taken in my career of teaching, which was on MR spectro. I don't know if anybody of you is from that time, but yeah. So I had taught MR spectro in great detail. And because I didn't know. I was a very fresh radiologist then. So I thought everything, every damn thing. And in this entire process of two, two and a half years, I have learned how to withhold information. <laughs> or, you know, how do you concise information is a skill which I have also learned because that time this MR spectro class only went on for two hours. <laughs> so imagine if you guys were there who can't study radio for two hours, wanted if you would have studied MR spectro for two hours, what would have happened? <laughs> Anyways, so this is ring enhancing lesion. All right. If I give you a CT, so one of you had asked why it, uh, what is NCC and what is diffuse axonal injury? So up deco, if I give you both possibilities, what is this? This is very white. Yeah, so this is very calcified. So this has to be calcified neurocysticercosis. All right, so this is calcified NCC. All right, if I tell you HIV, so you are asking why not toxo? So remember, toxo bina HIV is you will never mark. You will never make a diagnosis in chalta firta person without HIV of toxo because it's a very, immune, very, very opportunistic infection. It doesn't affect you and I, provided you and I don't have HIV. So that is what you want to remember. Particularly for exams, agar HIV AIDS the history mein, then you only, then only you think of toxo. And toxo is more common in the basal ganglia right so this is also ring enhancing lesion like tb so this will be more common in basal ganglia second would be hiv aids and third would be very very important uh, it's maybe lipid lactate peak milega right so it's maybe lipid lactate peak zarur milega so both tb and toxo tt will have um lipid lactate okay all right fata 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 chalo kya tumor hai bitemporal hemianopia child what do you see white white on CT? So, sir say, I mean, C say child, C say calcification, C say cystic, C say he diagnosis is CP, craniopharyngioma. Correct. So, this question has come a lot of times in NEET exam. This is indeed craniopharyngioma. Young female with headache, you are seeing this mass, very enhancing mass, dural tail sign. What is this? This is meningioma. So, this is meningioma. All right. So, dural tail sign, young female, meningioma. This is asked as a one-liner. image When the antenatal skull has this frontal depression, the cerebellum starts to appear like a banana. So, lemon and banana sign are seen in 
Yeah. So they can either give you spina bifida in the option or they can give you Arnold carry malformation. So any of these is going to be correct. Okay. So this is lemon and banana sign. Dural tail sign is this expansion along the dura. All right. So you're going to see this enhancement along the dura. Okay. That's my ninjoma for you. Okay. Two x-ray views very quickly. Tell me whenever you see maxillary sinus very well, this is open mouth waters or modified waters view. Iska dusra naam kya hai? What else can we call it as? We can also call it as peers view. On the other hand, when maxillary sinus is obscured by this bone, this is known as cold well view. So this is cold well view. Okay, right. So these are done. So lastly, respiratory radiology, we are only left with 20 more images done with, uh, done with 80. Okay. All right. History of trauma, difficulty breathing, two things. One is an opacity where you are having this meniscus here. So right-sided opacity with a meniscus, this is pleural effusion. Because there is history of trauma, what else can I call it? I have to call it hemothorax, right? So, right pleural effusion or hemothorax. On the other hand, again, a pathology on the right side, but now you are having hyperlucency. Zada black hai, instead of being white. So, this is right-sided pneumothorax. I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, okay? So, I hope you know this, okay? Um, Anushri is asking if meningioma is only on one side or it can cross midline. It's one of the tumors which can actually cross the midline. Okay. So meningiomas, GBM, glioblastoma, multiforme, both of them can cross the midline. Okay. M mode pe signs poochte hai. So when you see lines and then you see this beach, beach, beach. This is what is known as seashore sign. Beach pe hum kab jate hai? Normal time pe jate hai, right? We don't go during COVID. We don't, don't go during PG preparation. Normal. Chill ok. Exam ke baad jayenge. The seashore sign is normal time. On the other hand, if you see just line, 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 this is barcode sign or stratosphere sign. Hai na? To abnormal time pe, PG preparation ke time pe kaha jana allowed hai? You're only allowed to go to grocery store or shopping at sometimes when you want to do barcode or you can go in your imagination to space <laughs> so stratosphere right so this is where you can be uh, abnormal okay so now remember this i am giving you one hack for mcq exam because in do you think in actual exam you will have such beautiful images ki aise line seashore dikhega barcode dikhega no if you have options you know a b c and d and only one is correct and the options are seashore barcode, stratosphere, and let's say deep sulcus sign. Do I even need to see image? Tell me, do I even need to see image? There's only one answer which is possible. Two options to waise hi rule out ho gaye. To answer can only be seashore. You know, so actually why I brought this image is because you don't need to learn this image only. Don't get confused ever. If they give you both in the options, which they usually will, both can't be answers. So it has to be seashore. You know, so that is how you can actually crack this. But they can bar because now examiners have become smarter. They give you A, B, B, C, you know. So then our trick falls flat. Ki ye aise kuch kuch log hai, jo logo ko smart bana rahe, inko rokna padega. So now they are becoming smarter. Okay. So that is what uh, is happening. Okay. So history of trauma with difficulty breathing is there. What is the diagnosis in the first one? Ye kya hai? Here you have pneumo and you have hemo. So this is hydropneumothorax. So this is hydropneumothorax when you see an air fluid level. Again, they became smarter and look at this. This is a very nice question that they gave. History of trauma, difficulty breathing, they gave this. Aare bacho ko laga, are, are, air fluid level, this has to be hydropneumothorax. So this was not hydropneumothorax. This was below the diaphragm. This is fundus. So what has happened is the diaphragm is lifted. So this means that there is diaphragm injury. So this was asked as a clinical scenario that which of the following would be contraindicated here. So you don't want to put an ICD here. It is not a hydropneumothorax. So that's why I've kept both of these images together so that you appreciate where diaphragm is. If this is below diaphragm. If this is above diaphragm from okay i hope this point is clear to you chalo ye to easy hai fada fad batao baby hai with bowel loops in the chest right neonatal respiratory distress so this is bogdelic type of congenital diaphragmatic hernia bogdelic means bpl posterior defect on the 
लेफ्ट साइड ठीक है चलो फटाफट सेम पैथोलॉजी एक्सरे एंड सीटी एक्सरे शोइंग यू दीज मल्टीपल डायलेटेड ब्रोंकाई सीटी शोइंग यू मल्टीपल डायलेटेड ब्रोंकाई दिस इज ब्रोंकियक राइट तो ट्रैम ट्रैक साइन सिग्नेट रिंग साइन ये सब होता है बट वॉट आई वॉन्ट यू टू रिमेम्बर इज हाव इट लुक्स लाइक सो दैट इज वॉट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो डायलेटेड ब्रॉन्कस विथ थिक एंड वॉल इज ब्रॉन्क डिसज टू पॉपकॉर्स फॉर यू सो इंसिडेंटली डायग्नोज होंगे एसिम्टोमेटिक होंगे दिस इज अ चेस्ट हमाटोमा वेल डिफाइंड लीजन विद कैल्सिफिकेशन इफ दिस हैपन्स इन द ब्रेस्ट मेमोग्राफी दिस इज अ फाइब्रो एडनोमा सो बोथ ऑफ दीज आर योर पॉपकॉर्न साइंस राइट Child with fever dyspnea, very easy. You are seeing multiple, multiple nodules. This is miliary TB. This is the prototype of these miliary nodules. But again, they twisted this and they asked you miliary nodules can be seen where all? If I see miliary nodules with eosinophilia, repeat question. It is tropical pulmonary eosinophilia or Loeffler's syndrome. It can also be seen in the classical mimic of TB, which is. histoplasmosis it can also be seen agar occupational worker ka history hai in silicosis it can also be seen in healed varicella chicken pox agar lung mein chala gaya it can also have miliary nodules okay so that is what you want to know even one more condition agar mitral stenosis diya hai pulmonary hemosiderosis all right ms ka history diya hoga so these are all of your differentials for miliary nodules okay नेक्स्ट यू वॉन्ट टू लोकलाइज फीवर डिस्निया कफ है डायग्नोसिस में ही बता देती हूँ न्यूमोनिया है यू टेल मी विच लोब राइट लोअर लोब राइट मिडल लोब लेफ्ट लोअर लोब लेफ्ट मिडल लोब ठीक है मैम दो तो रूल आउट कर लेंगे कि लेफ्ट साइड है ना राइट लेफ्ट की गलती तो शायद नहीं करेंगे तो राइट एंड लेफ्ट तो लेफ्ट मिडल लोब या लेफ्ट लोअर लोब सो यू हैव टू सी द सिलवटिंग लॉर्ड ऑफ यू सींग लेफ्ट लोअर लोब विच इज रॉन्ग सो यू आर सींग दैट इट्स गोइंग एंड मर्जिंग विद दी हार्ट आई कैन नॉट मेक आउट द मार्जिन और बाउंड्री बिटवीन हार्ट एंड द ओपेसिटी सो दिस इज इन द लिंगुला और द लेफ्ट मिडल लोब लेटरल फॉर्दर हेल्प में बिकॉज इट इज ओवर लाइंग द हार्ट अगर हार्ट पे ओवर लाइ कर रहा है इट हैज टू बी राइट मिडल लोब और लेफ्ट मिडल लोब विच इज लिंगुला अगर पीछे जा रहा है देन इट इज योर लोअर लोब लेटरल विल नेवर टेल मी लेटरल विल नेवर टेल मी राइट और लेफ्ट बट माई ए पी टेल्स और माई पी ए टेल्स मी राइट so this is what you need to know this is what is known as the silhouette sign if the margin between heart and opacity is not clear it is in middle lobe that is what is silhouette sign i hope this is clear ha maine repeat bhi kiya agar margin between heart and opacity is not clear it is in middle lobe this question has come this time neat only had asked you a question on silhouette again you want a hack here if you don't know यू मार्क मिडल लोब और राइट बस राइट लेफ्ट देख लेना अगर राइट में ऐसे ऐसे ओपेसिटी है राइट मिडल लोब लेफ्ट में ऐसे ऐसे है लेफ्ट मिडल लोब और राइट सो यूजली इट इज मिडल लोब सिलवटिंग विच इज शोन ओके दैट इज वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू नो रिप काउंटिंग बता देती हूँ बिकॉज देर आर रेकरेंट क्वेश्चन ऑन दैट सबसे पहला बस अगेन द ट्रिक फॉर काउंटिंग रिप इज सबसे पहला आइडेंटिफाई कर लो लुक एट द फर्स्ट वन वेरी क्लियरली सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट रिप देन दिस इज द सेकेंड रिप then this is the third rib then this is the fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth like that okay so i'll tell you again it seems very difficult you know <laughs> rib counting is something when when you do it it seems easy otherwise when somebody showing it it seems difficult so what you want to actually learn is they were they will always give you a posterior rib they will never give you anterior rib so your trick is pehle do ribs pure kar lo this is first and second after this you only need to know the posterior ones you only need to count posterior ones otherwise you will get confused so first wala hi samajhna hai sabse upar wala na look at the one which is coming chotu sa so this is the first one thoda de zoom karti hu so that it makes sense so this is first one this is second one fir third fourth fifth sixth seventh <laughs> is this okay yeah so that is how you are going to count the ribs trick is pehle sabse upar ko identify kar lo and then you will count only posterior ones okay what is this that you are seeing here this is your air bronchogram sign so this was also asked air bronchogram sign is seen in a consolidation so these are all consolidations which mark pneumonia 
चलो ये क्या है फीवर डिस्निया कफ इन आर कंट्री इफ यू डोंट नो यू कैन एटलीस्ट टेक अ बेट ऑन ट्यूबिस सो दिस इज ट्री इन बर्ड साइन एंड दीज आर मल्टीपल लिम्फ नोट विच आर ऑल निकोटिक सो दिस इज ट्री इन बर्ड साइन ऑफ एक्टिव ट्यूबिस ऑल राइट इमिजिएटली यू हैव टू स्टार्ट ऑन ए टी टी टू चाइल्ड अगेन बच्चे सारे बच्चों को फीवर हो रहा है यहाँ पे क्या है फीवर ड्रूलिंग डिस्फेज वेरी सिक चाइल्ड एंड यू सी एपिग्लोटिस इज इनफ्लेम दिस इज थम्ब साइन इंडिकेटिंग अक्यूट एपिग्लोटाइटिस दिस मीन्स दैट देर इज अ बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन ऑन दी अदर हैंड यहाँ पे क्या हो रहा है बार्किंग कफ ही दे दिया तो क्लियर ही हो गया स्ट्राइडर ब्राइकिंग कफ दिस इज क्रूप लैरिंगो ट्रेक्यो ब्रोंकाइटिस दिस इज वायरल para influenza virus is the most common cause okay exam mein clear image nahi aati that is true but kuch na kuch history dete hain jisse it becomes clear okay so that's why i have given you history on top of all of this ki jab revise karo to history dekh ke bhi ek idea lag jayega all right so child playing alone means kuch na kuch foreign body bachcha khayega all right so never keep children alone one more lesson all right you always have to monitor children so where what has happened to this child this child is eaten when it is round you write eso phagus like this it is in the eso phagus whereas if it is a slit it is in the trachea all right so management here rigid bronchoscopy management here upper gi endoscopy okay if it is stuck here at the level of cricopharyngeus it needs to be removed agar yahan pe dikh raha hai uh, coin what will you do kuch nahi child ko bolo apne um, you will have to monitor for 48 hours in 48 hours it will be uh, removed most likely in the stool itself okay so that is what is happening last five image no history just identify ye to image hi bata deta hai this is a thermoluminescent dosimeter this is a personal dosimeter device this has lithium fluoride in the us in our country we use calcium sulfate with this prosium kitna monthly pe bhejna hota hai three monthly we send it for reading where do we wear it with respect to the lead apron we wear it below the lead apron at this chest level all right below the lead apron what is this this is 0.5 mm lead most commonly minimum thickness of lead 0.5 हेलमेट दिस इज नोन एज द लेक्सल फ्रेम बिकॉज लार्ज लेक्सल डिस्कवर्ड इट गामा नाइफ हेल्प यू गिव टारगेटेड रेडिएशन टू ब्रेन ट्यूमर्स सो दिस इज फ्रीक्वेंटली डन फॉर पिट्यूटरी एडनोमास दिस इज डन फॉर सीपी एंगल श्वोनोमास we do it for solitary metastasis right so kuch kuch tumors jahan pe surgeon operate nahi karna chahte we will use gamma knife minimally invasive it can give targeted radiotherapy okay what is this instrument whenever you see this compression paddle this is a mammography digital mammography unit so this is it for the 100 images and uh, exactly in 2 hours i've managed to complete so, so i will be sharing this annotated pdf on the group i hope you had a good time and it was not too fast or too slow and it was all right so uh, the the session will remain as recorded session on youtube so you can catch it if you've missed something all right and uh, tomorrow again we have a class for btr students so tomorrow we are doing btr bonus of biochemistry same time 6 pm this will not be on youtube uh, that will only be on the app like we usually do okay all right thank you so much and uh, study well and i'll see you all soon thank you